The word Ragnarok in Old Norse has several meanings including fate of the gods, twilight of the gods, or fate of mankind. It is the destruction of the entire cosmos and everything in it including the gods themselves. It is the ending point of Viking mythology. It was a prophecy of what would come at an unknown time in the future. The gods will wage a final battle against the giants and other evil forces of the world. Several events will take place before this final battle. The world will suffer three years of a terrible winter. The forces of evil will be released upon the world and wars will rage among the humans. The trickster Loki will gather the frost giants and sell to Asgard, the home of the gods. The wolf Enner, the serpent Jormungandr, and Hel, the goddess of the dead will break free to join Loki, the giants, and the other evil forces of the world. The god Heimdall will sound his mighty horn and summon the gods for the great battle. All of the great gods including Odin and Thor will be killed. Loki, the monsters, the giants, and other evil beings will perish as well. The earth will catch fire, the sun and moon will be destroyed, and the whole earth will sink below the sea. It will be the end of everything. However, the world tree Yggdrasil will survive. Two humans and some animals will be sheltered among the branches of the tree. The earth will arise fresh and green, and the two humans and the animals will begin to repopulate the earth. As well, a small number of the gods do survive this, including Thor's two sons, Magni and Modi and they would use Thor's hammer to help restore order to the world. The Netflix show Ragnarok is about this world ending event. The gods have returned to Earth reincarnated as humans to play their roles in this final battle. Events don't play out exactly how they do in the lore, but the show does do a great job of bringing the old Norse mythology to life. So let's go over all of the different gods that are seen in the show and explain them a bit more than what the show does. Odin is the Allfather and the supreme among the Norse gods, and the awe-inspiring ruler of Asgard. He is the master of wisdom, war, poetry, and magic. He has continuously quested after knowledge with the help of his two ravens, two wolves, and the Valkyries. He famously sacrificed his one eye in order to see the cosmos more clearly. His thirst for wisdom once saw him hang from the world tree for a full nine days and nine nights until he was blessed with the knowledge of the runic alphabet. His very nature would allow him many opportunities to unlock the mysteries of the universe. He would often be pictured riding upon a flying horse with eight legs. He wielded the spear Gungnir which was said to never miss its mark. He is thought to have five sons with four different partners. It is also because of Odin that we have Wednesday which literally means Woden's day. Odin is recognized Incarnated in the body of an elderly man, Wotan Wagner. He believes in the path that they must follow the old ways of violence against the giants to achieve victory, and he will play a very crucial role in guiding the other gods against the ice giants. The god Freya is associated with love, fertility, war, passion, and magic. As well, she is also known for her beauty and her ability to control and manipulate those around her. She was the sister sister of Freyr and she ruled over a meadow in heaven named Folkvanger. It was believed that half of those who died in battle would reside in Folkvanger while the other half would be guided to Valhalla by the Valkyries. As well, Freya was also depicted wearing a necklace and a cloak of feathers. Her companions included two cats that pulled her chariot, as well a boar. This goddess is reincarnated in the form of Iman. She would go on to master her powers of control and seduction to become a solid ally of Odin and Thor against the ice giants. Thor is held as the protector of humanity and the god of lightning, wielding his powerful dwarf forged hammer named Milner, a devastating weapon that could slay giants and break mountains. 
Hades. He is known for defeating the world serpent. After being poisoned by the serpent, he would slay it with his hammer and then fall dead just a few steps later due to the poisoning. With Magna being a reincarnation of Thor, his powers include superhuman strength, speed, agility, and the ability to influence the elements. He is full of bravery, strength, passion, and righteousness. Magna is also named after Thor's son, Magni, who is a result of the relationship between Thor and the giant Yarn Soxa, which is mirrored in the sequence in which Magma and Soxa have a relationship briefly. In North mythology, Thor is often depicted riding a chariot drawn by two immense goats. Furthermore, the word Thursday is taken directly from the Norse meaning Thor's Day. Loki is the notorious trickster and is considered part of the gods despite being descended from the giants. Like Loki, Lauritz is gender fluid and struggles with his identity between being a god or a giant, making him very unpredictable. Loki has the powers of near invulnerability and the ability to withstand pain and heal instantly. As well, he can shapeshift and take up animalistic forms. In the mythology, Loki was seen as a form of a blood brother to Odin and the father of the monsters. And I don't mean literal blood brother as in they were related, but that they became blood brothers through some type of a ceremony or a pact. Exactly what this was is not made completely clear in the mythology, but they were definitely not literally blood brothers. And like in the real mythology, he births the world serpent that would become a key enemy of the gods. After he releases it into the sea, it foreshadows the start of Ragnarok, which is prophesied in Norse mythology to begin with an unrest at the sea, which could be attributed to the world serpent. Tia is known as the god of war in Norse and Germanic mythologies. He has excellent combat abilities and war manipulation. He is the most brave among all of the gods. He is reincarnated as Harry, a mechanic in an auto shop. Tia is known in mythology to have sacrificed his hand to the monstrous wolf Fenner as a distraction to allow the other gods a chance to chain the beast down. The show changes this a bit to have him lose it in an altercation with Fior, thus showing just how much complete obedience he has to Odin and the cause against the ice giants. Ragnarok the show has done a great job of imagining the great battles between the giants and the gods taking place in our modern day. The show does deviate a bit from the mythology as well including climate change and corporate corruption as a major sign of the giants. However, it does do a great job of just generally bringing the mythology of the gods to life. Lastly, what were your guys' thoughts on the ending of Season 3 if you have seen it? The show does set up the interpretation that the entire show relating to the gods and Ragnarok were pretty much made up in Magna's head as a way to deal with the grief of his friend dying in Season 1. That he essentially just pulled stuff from the comic book series and it was a way for him to get over his grief. And the show ends with him coming to the realization that he doesn't need his comic book fantasy anymore and that he can begin the healing process. The other interpretation is that the more peaceful world we are living in at the end is the rebirth of the world after its destruction from the Ragnarok battle. However, this isn't really a super solid interpretation because the show is definitely heavily leaning in to the trope that it was all in his head. And I'm just personally not a huge fan of this ending and I really wish they would have just leaned into it being a literal battle. But either way, the show is still definitely worth watching from start to finish. But what do you think? Please give me your thoughts and have a great day.